May 1791, the height of the French Revolution. Three skeptics have set out to challenge a legend. The legend. Whoever shall drink from the skull of the man who is buried here will inherit his powers. The name of the dead man? Michel de Nostradamus. His powers? The ability to predict the events of the future. For 200 years, his grave has remained undisturbed because the legend also said that whoever disturbed his grave would die. It was not the skeleton that suddenly startled the grave diggers, but the plaque around its neck with the date May 1791, which could only have been placed there at the time of burial in 1566. Nostradamus had predicted 200 years before the exact date when his body would be dug up. The shot that killed that grave digger was fired from the riot of the surrounding revolution, a stray bullet that fulfilled the legend of Nostradamus. Was it a coincidence? prophecy. We're going to look at this man, this uh, Michel de Nostradamus. He was a respected French physician whose predictions of the future have mystified scholars for over 400 years. Ten hours into the ground war, at 2.30 p.m., British and American troops began a massive artillery... ...you have focused on two engagements, actually parts of the same battle. These were the first engagements between U.S. ground forces and elements of the Iraqi army's Republican Guard. The battle, codenamed Norfolk, and another engagement which has already become something of a classic, an engagement already being studied at Armour School, 73 Easting. We only went approximately 20 kilometers into Iraq the first day. Initially, all we saw was miles of sand. The next day, though, we moved through masses of enemy soldiers who were just walking through the desert. Captain H.R. McMaster led a cavalry troop that had been designated as the spearhead for the Hail Mary as U.S. forces crossed into Iraq. His job was to find the Republican Guard without engaging them, just to find them for the larger U.S. units that would follow. The next morning, uh, we got the word the attack in five minutes 
to the to the seven zero east. I said, "Men, this is the moment we've all waited." The troop was moving towards a, a village that was not apparent on any maps. In fact, we had no maps of the area. From the village, the, the Bradley received 23 millimeter fire and also some heavy machine gun fire from the area. The third platoon leader reported it to me and said he was he was returning fire with his Bradleys. I ordered the two tank platoons to come up on either side of me, and I gave them the order to fire. What happened is the nine tanks fired the high explosive rounds into the village. As soon as I, I, I give that order to Mike to cease fire, he comes back to me now with the report, uh, enemy tanks uh, to the left. And I said, Roger, tanks to the left. And just as I was saying that, we came over this ridge. My gunner said, uh, tanks direct front. And I yelled, uh, fire. The first enemy tank erupted into flames. First thing to lie, first I was in a panic. And I caught myself and said, no, don't panic, do your job. I loaded faster that time than I ever loaded before. I was also calling on the, the troop net. <laughs> I remember rather vividly uh, one of the enemy crewmen uh, leaping out of the tank as it exploded in the flames, and he himself was on fire. Two enemy tanks engaged my tank and, and missed at, uh, at pretty, pretty close range. At the same time that Captain McMaster and his men were engaged in what has been described as a classic cavalry charge, scouts from the 7th Cavalry moved north of McMaster's location trying to find the Republican Guard. My crew, my vehicle, we were the first ones to run into the Republican Guard out of the squadron. You know, I was all excited, you know, let's charge right in there. But when I actually heard rounds going off and heard people coming back over the radio telling about it, it was, it was bad. I was scared, I was terrified, I was, you know, praying to God that everything was going to be all right. My uh, track was initially, it was shot by uh, a BMP. And as we were evacuating the vehicle and it was hit again, I was up by the driver's hatch of the vehicle, extracting my driver from the vehicle. When there was a loud explosion, bright light, and next thing I known, I knew I was thrown about, uh, oh, about 20 feet from the vehicle. But then after we got into platoon leader's vehicle, we were uh, shot again twice by a T-72 tank and uh, in which every member of my crew and the crew of that vehicle sustained some sort of injuries. I'm monitoring the troops radio. First of all, everything seems pretty positive. Next thing you know, all of a sudden the radio explodes with medic, 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 and screaming everywhere. I found Sergeant Gentry laying on the ground. I started doing CPR on him, but as you know, he didn't make it. As we looked back, it was just a sea of burning vehicles. I mean, uh, just incredible. McMaster's cavalry troop had been forced into an engagement with the Republican Guard. When that fighting ended, McMaster's forces stayed in place, while Captain Taro's unit from the 1st Infantry moved through their lines to resume contact with the Iraqis. I have been the worst. I didn't know what I'd to expect, but... Uh... It was surreal. We could hear the okay. some of the Iraqi soldiers come out and they were crying. The Iraqi troops yelling Allah, Allah, and, and watch them get on their knees crying in front of that tank. You can smell the, the flesh, and you, you know it's, you just smell it, and the diesel and the, the gunpowder. That, that's what war was. To see, hear, and smell. It. And come morning. Everything just started turning peaceful. There was no more, uh, no more firing or anything. With the sun coming up, everything just uh, sort of died out. And then about 7.40 that morning, in fact, 7.43 that morning, we got the word, cease fire, cease fire. This is one thing I never want to have to do again. It's not as easy as just drawing that arrow on that map. I never want to go back to that desert if I don't have to.